All right, so we're going to do this, and then we're going to jump into a question three of exercise 3C. Um, and you'll see, gee, wow, it's pretty overwhelming the degree to which they jump into it straight away in the textbook. So, um, looking here, all right, I've, got, I've drawn the function in green, and I've got these dotted lines. Who can remember what they're called? Asymptotes. Asymptotes, very good. All right, so what that means is the function doesn't cross them. It's going to get infinitely close to it, but never touch it. It means, no, at least, yeah, put the bottom down, it's not making noise. And it means it doesn't touch that point, it doesn't exist at that point. So if we're looking here, I'm asking the question, what's the domain? What's the point furthest to the left? Well, the arrow there is saying it's going to the left forever. The point furthest to the left is minus infinity. And the point furthest to the right, all right, that arrow is going to infinity as well. All right, so there's a temptation to say, well, it exists everywhere. It just keeps going to the left and to the right. But it doesn't exist here. That's what that asymptote tells us. It doesn't exist on this line. And so the domain is, it exists everywhere except at that line. The way we state that is x does not equal minus 3. It exists everywhere outside of it. That's the only restriction of x. x does not equal minus 3. Okay. Similarly with y, we can see the arrow pointing down. It's going down forever to negative infinity. It's going up forever to positive infinity. Oh, it exists everywhere except here. This dotted line tells you it doesn't exist when y is 2. It's going, it's getting closer and closer and closer in that direction and closer in this direction, but it's never going to reach it. It exists everywhere except positive 2. Anytime there's an asymptote, those are the statements we can make. All right, it doesn't exist at those points. Now, some people I'd seen were having a go at it and they've written a statement like this. X um, is less than uh, minus three and X is greater than minus three. And whilst it's technically correct, it's true, right? X exists for all values less than minus three and for all values greater than three. That's a correct statement. The way we write it is like this. X does not equal minus three. Okay, move on to the next one. So here we're going to learn some new notation. All right, we're going to take it a little bit further. We can see arrows sort of pointing like this, right? It's going that way forever, upwards and to the right forever, and upwards and to the left forever as well. So that means it's going in both directions forever. The point furthest to the left is minus <coughs> infinity. The point furthest to the right is positive infinity. There's no restrictions on x. So what we say is the domain is x, e, r, x, epsilon, r. What that means, literally, x, our variable, epsilon means belongs to, it's a part of, and r means the set of all real numbers, from negative infinity to positive infinity, every number that you can count. All right, the set of all real numbers. Okay, very good. That's the domain. And then for the range, the lowest possible value of y is uh, minus 2 included. And the highest possible value of y, infinity. So it's going up forever. I'm saying drop the infinity off and then flip it. And then check it. Is it true that all values of y are larger than or equal to minus 2? Yes. All right, so our range, our domain. All right, on to the last one. Uh, we can see arrows pointing to the left, pointing to the right. The domain exists for all positive value, for all values of x, x, e, r. It's interesting we say real values. Why would we say real values? Because if you're gonna do um, specialist maths and learn about imaginary values, imaginary numbers. So real numbers or ones that exist on the Cartesian plane. Okay, um, so that's our domain. Let's talk about our range. The lowest possible value of y. If you're looking at it, you'd say the lowest possible value of y. That arrow suggests it's sort of going across and down forever, except the asymptote tells us it can never pass that line. It's an invisible barrier that it can never reach or get past. 
So the lowest possible value of y here is minus 2, and it's not included. It gets infinitely close to that point, but doesn't touch it. It's less than y, and this arrow tells you onwards, upwards, forever. Um, so we'll have infinity. We drop the infinity. The variable's on the wrong side. We have to flip it. y greater than minus 2. And then look at the function. Is it true that on this function, all values of y are larger than my, uh, positive 2? Well, I'll help start that up for you, so positive 2, not negative 2. All values of y are larger than positive 2? Yes. Okay, we can see it only exists for values of y larger than 2. Okay, so finish the worksheets, and then we want you to move on to question 3 in the book. Uh, that's what I want us to have a bit of a go at now. Yeah.